everyone, welcome back to Pommy and Oz. I hope you're all doing well. If you are new around here, please drop a like, please subscribe, please share this because this is going to be an absolute fantastic video and a shed ton, as a new word, of research has gone into this. This is a video request from two wonderful people in the channel, Peter Haywood and Arrow Hart, who requested and have asked this question and a lot of you have DM'd me with the same question. Where are Cow and at? Are we better? Are we a better side? Where's your positivity coming from? So in this video, what I'm going to try and do is try and explain it to you and try and give you some reassurance with some statistics and some just opinion so we can have a nice little adult conversation of where we are. So let's get straight into it. So one thing is if we look at the core stats under T, particularly this year, and we see the improvement through a good board and body of work, is how we stack up. Now, this season is a lot harder to analyse. Every team is suffering. 90% of them are in hubs, short and quarters. It pretty much is a new game, particularly if you look at the statistics and sides that are doing well. This, this is kind of like AFL rebranded. It's a lot difficult to create momentum. It's a lot bit, you've got less time for the shift. AFL has this wonderful thing where there is a huge momentum shift in games. But some key numbers do stick out for us. One of them is that we're plus 33 in clearances. First use ball, we're 86 plus in kicks and we're plus 45 in marks. We are looking to hit up a lot more uncontested marks than we ever have done. Our kick ratio at the moment is 1.9, which is the third highest in the comp. And that gives us a 70% disposal efficiency. Now, genuinely in the AFL, when you kick more, you turn the ball over more. The kicking skill is a lot harder. Handballs are easy to hit. Now, Carlton are 70%. And if you look at the teams with the higher ones, we're right in the disposal efficiency with them. We're only four off number one, 74% is the highest, and that's Richmond, who have a higher handball and kick ratio than us. So you can see there that that is a huge thing for Carlton. We do look now to move the ball a lot more by foot. It's a lot more territory game. It's a lot quicker, and it's a lot more angled. If you look at our dimensions of our attack for the last 10 years, a possession heat map was a lot more down the wing. Now we're starting to see it more corridor. We're starting to see these kicks heavily more into traffic, playing the more high risk high reward game that is more kind of in vogue with the afl we look at some of the other stats as well for the first time ever we're top five for points per game we're top five for inside 50s we're top five for least uncontested possessions against which shows our pressure is up there we're top five in creating contests stopping marks there's less uncontested marks against us and these are really important stats to look at. The reason these are important is because you can see where our pressure is coming from. We're looking to turn it over in the midfield. We're looking to stop teams playing their way. We're looking to pat the corridor and make it harder. However, there is some warning signs where I can maybe see and answer the question you're all asking. Is why do we have these big culture shifts and these turnovers and games? And one of them is that... We don't get the ball enough. We're ranked 17th for actual touches. And that kind of is indicative of our game style. It's kind of all one way. It's very aggressive. It's very high risk and high reward. And we don't quite have that ability to control it. You look at the other side, like West Coast and Richmond, they have the ability to slow the ball down and play it in their back line. Take time off the clock, looking for these things. And we don't do that. And when we do that, we invite the pressure. And pressure kills us. And this is another telling stat. 17th in tackles we just don't lay enough tackles we don't play enough tackle branded football we've kind of gone from being a very ugly side to watch that can make games ugly i was going through a lot of videos we made last year and looking at the comments on blue abroad from a lot of you guys and girls and it was about making the game ugly making the game very heavily contested we've kind of strayed away from that and we've kind of lost that ability to play an ugly game when the pressure comes on we do crumble also about the team, we look at individual players and our individual players, individual players this year have really shot up. You've got players like Levi Casbolt who are ranked seventh in contested marks, total marks inside 50, eighth in contested marks a game and inside 50 per game. You've got players like Patrick Cripps who are still dominating top four contested possession, top two in total clearances. You've got Sam Doherty who's leading the way in rebound 50s and rebound 50s per game. Meters gain top three. We've got Liam Jones top three in one percenters per game. You've got Mark Pitnett top seven 
in total hit outs per game and Jacob Wheater in top six in one percenters per game top two in one-on-one -on -one percentages you've got these but another issue we've got player wise is the amount of clangers the amount of turnovers we've got a lot of players Liam Jones is in that category we've got Cripps is another player who's got a high turnover percentage in top 20 in clangers we have a lot of these midfield and key position players that are turning the ball over so for as good as we are at winning the ball back we're also making basic mistakes and for me, that is, again, a cultural issue. When we make mistakes, this game is a very high pressure. The way team plays, it's very all or nothing. It's very high intensity, very get the ball there. It's quite simply, we don't have a plan B. And when we turn it over, we invite pressure. And the way we're set up at the moment is to counter punch. And when someone gets a flurry of punches in, we get on the ropes and we lose that game plan. We start to become too incentric in the way we play we look to handball too much and you look at the times that we've lost games half on there was way too many handballs in that third quarter that extra kick that extra handball too much touches for me there was the issue no one is looking to slow the game down slow the game down bring it back on our terms look to kick backwards slow it down and reset we kind of play a very high intensity high excitable game of football and for me there it is that is why we struggle because individually we have got better as well. You can see that these two things we've talked about, team and individuals, they're a lot better than they have been ever. This is probably the most complete side and the most complete football we've ever played. However, there is then little things that need ironing out. And for me, the only way you can iron that out is bringing players that do have level heads and cool heads. And that leads me to my next point, the list and where that may come from. Now, it is my firm belief that we don't have enough winners and we don't have enough, for me, we don't have enough natural leaders in the game. Now, if we look at the core of our team, our average, average games is 67.4 games played with an average age of 24.1. However, for me, when we look at this statistic, it doesn't tell the true story. Because if you remove our leaders, Simo and Betts, that's only 47 games and 23.2 in age. And the way that we want to look at this is that the average of the last 20 winners is 26 and 126 games played and 26 age. And it's, it's a flawed system. However, if we look at global sport, a good way to analyze it is using your median. Now, for those who don't know, but a median is basically you just analyze all the numbers from numerical order. So one being here and say 50 is your last. You spread them all in a numerical row, one to 50, and you take whatever the middle number is. And that is your median. And this is a really good way to dispel that myth if you've got old people a lot of old players, a lot of high gamers, and look at the core median of your age, you genuinely find a good little partner margin. Now, the last 20 flag winners, if you use the median, is 66 and 24. Now, we counted it's 35 and 23. And you can see there that the recruitment has kind of let us down in that aspect. That's one way where the list is kind of sorely missing. And when you're missing these leaders and you're missing this game experience, it's a lot harder to will yourself to win. And for me, if we look at Gold Coast, we look at Saints, we look at Lions, three teams that have really, really had a big improvement. They've brought in core winners. Their, their core average A, the core average win percentage of them is 62%. And if you look at Carlton, our core average at the moment is 40% of players we've brought in. You're looking at McGovern and you're looking at Pittenet, they're the only players on our list with an above 55% win percentage. And one of them's played a handful of games and one of them's never been the major player of a team. And when you look at that and you remove, when you look at that and you look at finals experience, only eight finals is run as an average between our team. And that's circulated over only six players with Eddie Betts making up 60% of that statistic. There you see, we haven't got the age and experience and winning breeds winning. Winning is a cultural thing. When the going gets tough, winners know how to win. And you can see that breakdown. And when people criticize Simo and Murphy, we've got to remember these guys haven't won ugly. They haven't won tough. They haven't got a whole host of experience. When you look at like the players that the Gold Coast have brought in, you've got Ellis, who's got a real high win percentage. He's been there and done it. These kind of cool heads who have done it, and particularly Ellis, for me, was a big trick count and missed. Got a good win percentage, played a lot of games, 
but above all has come from a system where they were rubbish and gone through the system to being winners. And it, it's a lack of experience, a lack of experience. And you see that Carlton are very good at hunting, but being the hunters. And it's kind of a shame because for me, moving forward, I have a little plan of how you instill this. And there's a way that we can bring up the winners, win percentage. We can bring up the core experience of senior players and we can add some finals experience into the thing. And these are the three players that I've kind of identified for me of how to make this list better. One of them is Nathan Broad, 79% win percentage and 27 years of old. He'd be the perfect replacement for your Cade Simpson. We know Cade Simpson's not gonna go, probably not going to go on for the next two years. He's certainly at the end of his career. And for me, he's someone that you look to bring in. For me, another issue as well we've got is we lack someone to really break lines off halfback. And Zach Williams is another one who fits the bill. Perfect age bracket, 25 and a 53% win percentage. And you bring these two players in and suddenly the dynamic down the back changes. You've got a very proficient ball user and a very good stopper in broad with a host to really help and be the lieutenant of Sam Doherty down the back with a big win percentage. He knows winning. He knows how to win when the pressure's on. And you've got Zach Williams who provides that injection and that zip and the pace. So in summary, really, I think that we're not far off. I think this trade period will be an interesting one to bring in the targets required. I do think Teague has been let down by recruitment last year. I think we didn't bring, we missed a trick with Butler and Brendan Ellis. But when you judge these things, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But it's definitely something that you can see the recruitment department have focused on. Players with winning mentalities, winning cultures, and inject that culture in. Um, Luke Power came in, and I don't think it's a coincidence that Power's come in and the team has got better at winning. Another guy that has a winning percentage as a player. And I think that we're just a couple of players there from really going to the next level. But for me, I think Nathan Broad is an intriguing one. I think he's someone who's got one of the highest win percentages in the AFL and he's a player that has a vast amount of experience and he fits the right age bracket and he's again a good user of the football. I'd love to know what you guys and girls think. Please let me know. Do you think I've hit the money on the head? Do you think it's an experience thing? Do you think it's a winning mentality thing? Or is it something else? I'd love to know. I think this is a great debate to have and it's super exciting to have the discussion because for me personally, that's where my excitement comes from. I see these boys are capable. I see individually they're doing well in the AFL charts. I see the team doing very well in the AFL charts as well. And for me, I think now we're down to the minuscules of something will change and it's a small thing. We just got to put our finger on it. Please let me know in the comments as always. I love the debate. I'll be back next time. If I don't see you through the week, see you through the window. Stay safe. Palm out. <laughs>